Hi everybody and welcome back to the Gentleman's Talk. Your host, James Dean Little John, he's here and he's ready to steer you into a fresh week next week. We are on Reflection Sunday. The topic is an important one. I've been away. I know I've been away. I know I've been away. I'd missed last Sunday and, and, and I have been absolutely smacked on the wrist. However, there's a reason. There's, there's always a reason if I'm going to miss something. It's not because I'm lazy, because I am not lazy. Um, and it's not because, um, you know, of anything sort of negative. I try not to be negative. However, um, as as the, uh, and we'll dive into this in a little bit later on. Um, I'm just going to crank this down a little bit. I've got the music blasting out. I found this new um, this new thing on Spotify. I didn't find it, actually. I was, um, I was presented with this new feature on Spotify where you go to DJ and it just, it's a DJ of everything you've listened to. Oh my God, what a fucking, what an absolute beauty. My brother showed me this. He came over on Friday and he was like, James, mate, have you seen the DJ thing? That's all I do, just plays loads of different songs and the guy comes on and talks to you. Sounds a little bit like LL Cool J. And um, <clears throat> I think it's LL Cool J. Anyway, um, it doesn't really matter, but it's, it's a voice. Anyway, talk, talk to me. And he's my own little personal DJ. I love that feature. It's elevated my music and also the fact that I don't have to try and find those songs. To, I'm listening to stuff from 2018. Anyway, I'm not going to digress into music just yet, but the topic is important. The importance of saying yes and no, and we're going to dive into that in just a little bit. However, with being away for two weeks, you're like, well, what have you been up to, James? I like to think, I hope you're saying what have you been up to. I've had an absolute fucking doozy, a doozy of a couple of weeks, and it sort of feeds in a little bit of why I didn't do my reflection on Sunday. I wasn't, um, I'd been, I've been under a lot of pressure at work and in life in general you know and um it just it just got on top of me and it just i was working last sunday um in the evening i didn't finish work till 7 15 i didn't get home till quarter to eight at night and um <clears throat> and i basically i'd had a bit of a a long weekend didn't really sort of enjoy it much and i and i, I suppose i just wasn't in a great place and um and with working i didn't finish work and eating till sort of nine o'clock and i was like oh, i'll do it on monday and then Monday came around and I went, no, and I just I just had no enthusiasm. I put myself under a lot of pressure. And then that fed into the the pressure that I was already under, that I'd put myself under for the for the second week. So I'd got, I'd rolled into a weekend with a bit of a shit outlook, um, if you like. And I was a bit like, oh, fuck this, I can't be arsed with life. Fucking weekends are shit. I was just doing nothing. Um, you know, you sort of look at your bank balance and you're like, fuck, I can't really afford to do much. Um, and it, it just kind of, it just got away from me. So um, what I did was I tried to do a bit of DIY, managed to do a little bit. Um, and it sort of kind of fed into like a bit of a, a weird sort of week. Sort of like, because I didn't do anything at the weekend, I just kind of felt a bit low. And I didn't do the right things. I didn't get out properly. I didn't go for my walks. I didn't do the things I should be doing, the meditation, reflection, whatever. I just fucking gave it up. I just went. And as soon as you do that, once you've been doing it routinely and it becomes that learned habit that I always talk about, I always, that's me beating the drum, baby. I'm beating the drum. Um, and, and that's what, it, if I'm always talking about those things, then when I don't do them, it's, it's so obvious, almost instantly, that I know I'm not doing them. But it's so easy to just go, fuck it, I just can't be asked. And it's so easy to put yourself in a shit mood and also to be in a shit place. You can do it so easily when you just can't be fucking asked. Um, and if you sit there and you go, you know... I'm just going to sit here all weekend. And, and sometimes we do need a weekend to relax. We, we absolutely do. But with relaxing comes a still, still need that element of socialising or element of doing a little bit of something to stimulate the mind a little bit. Um, and that's just me, maybe. Maybe you're different. You like to completely shut down. Um, but it's really, really important when you go into those places that, as I've been talking about, the things I'm talking about all the time with regards to meditation, reflection, getting that dopamine going, getting the serotonin going, getting outside in the sun while you can, whatever those things are, when you do them in some sort of, even if it's just a small segment of your day, what is a half an hour walk? What is a half an hour reflection? What's 15 minutes of shutting down and just sitting and with a little bit of music or an hour? You've got to be able to find those times. And that's why I always talk about, you know, give yourself the, you know, the due diligence you deserve. Give yourself the chance in life to do these things because when you stop doing them, that's what happens. And it's so easy for me, even with me beating that drum all the time, week in, week out, apart from last week. There's my fucking, I'll tarnish myself with that brush as well, so you don't need to. 
But it's all relevant to why I wasn't there. And it's all relevant to why you may not be there. You may not be in the moment. Maybe you're not doing those things. In fact, I, no, not maybe you're not. You're not doing those things. If you're not giving yourself the attention. I've learned so much. And I mean that in the terms of like, I've, I've been really under pressure at work. And I've handled it fucking fantastically. Never, normally I wouldn't. Normally I'd lose my shit. I'm really fucking over. And I'm just like, and I haven't. I've just sort of calmed down. And then I, I sort of had a, another bit of a, a busy week stroke into, I got a couple of, I've got a couple of, in fact, I've got, I think, three really, really, really positive things. And positive in, in, in the way that I structured this week. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to feed you back on my last week. So Monday, right the way through to Sunday. I'm going to give you just last week's little synopsis. Um, and, and it started off with, um, basically on Monday, I got an offer. Um, to go and speak, uh, go and spend some time with a friend of mine at Henley Henley Royal Regatta, and he said, "Do you want these free tickets?" And I was like, "By the way, they're tickets you can't buy." So you know, he got it through a connection, uh, a previous connection, and um, basically he had a ticket, and he was like, "Do you want to come along?" I was like, "Fucking yes, mate!" You know, and even though I knew in the heart of hearts I was going to stress me out a little bit because I was like, "Right, I've got to do," um, I had to do a site review, so I had to go to a site for two days. I stayed in a hotel. Then I was uh, working away doing his best off fucking shit all week. I knew that my, uh, my, uh, my daughter had a prom on Friday, which was a good thing, but I knew I had that. And this is just giving you an, an overview to a busy week. So I had a really, really... That's a little bit loud, sorry. It's, it's distracted me a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick it down a cog or two. And we'll see how that plays out. So, you know, I knew I had a busy week. I had to sort of kind of do the normal things. I had to do, you know, my normal day job. To drive to a site that I hadn't been to to do to do a full as best off audit, um, which isn't fucking exciting, I can tell you that. Then I was staying in a hotel, which always puts me out of sorts because it's not my comfortable bed and it's out of routine. And it was god awful fucking food in this fucking hotel. I'm telling you now. So you know, and there's oh Christ, I shouldn't be so un unthankful, but you know what I'm saying is it wasn't, it wasn't the best food. Um, I didn't sleep very well, and then the next day I was on a review again, and the people that were supposed to be there didn't fucking turn up. So I just had a catastrophic event, and also. I knew that I was going to this uh, Henley Regatta. I needed a certain clothes. So I needed to wear, um, specifically, I had to wear a blazer. I didn't have a blazer. I was like, where the fuck am I going to pick a blazer up for? So I went into TK Maxx. And this is the, about the time management. So I knew I was passing TK Maxx. I was like, I've got to just fucking go in. And this, you know, there is obviously other establishments available. But I dived into TK Maxx and I thought, I just have a fucking look. And there there was a £160 blazer. Right, 160 pound reduced to 28 pounds. Perfect. I fucking put this on, and it's something I'll wear all the time. I love it. I fucking it fits like a fits like a glove, the proverbial glove. And um, and I straight away was like, this is fucking. Com I love this. It was in a nice color. It goes nice with jeans. So it was a win win. I got something that I could wear on the day that I knew I could wear. I didn't spend the 150 pound that everywhere was qu quoting me for this fucking blazer, and I tied it in with going past on my way back from a site review back home. So it was just like TK Maxx. I was like, oh fucking dive in there, you know, and um. It was like absolutely, it just, that's the time management piece of like seeing something, trying to plan ahead. And that gave me a little bit of relief knowing that now I was ready for the, the I didn't need to stress about what I was going to wear because I had to wear certain things. And then I came back and I was like, I don't know, just, it just, it can, it can consume you. But if you manage things properly, and I think this is the importance and it will dive into the importance of saying yes and no at the right times. But because I said yes to these people and I said, yes, I'm going to have a, a, a barbecue on Friday night with my uh, brother and my other brother, which is Kieran, but, you know, brother from another mother. And, um, you know, we had a party and we had a, I knew that was in the stress because I wanted that to be right for us. But all of these things have led to, and my daughter, I did the photography for her, so I had to pull out the old camera and do a, some snapshots and get them captured. So there was a little bit of pressure there. So all of this little, they seem trivial. And, and, and if you were just dealing with one of those events on a weekly basis, they probably would be business as usual, you know, just sort of kind of normal. I can manage that. But it's the fact that I had three events in one week with a busy week already and knowing I had certain um, administration work I had to do like hire car return and making sure that, that was fueled and receipted and all that so I, I had the all these things to tie in um, that sort of added the pressure but because I, I did it 
methodically and I was like right and, and I said no to a few things and what I said no to this week was I said no to uh, going to my snooker night with Kieran um, I said no I said I'm not going to make Wednesday because I feel like I'm going to be stressed if I go back and I go out for a couple of hours that couple of hours is going to be taken away from me doing something else like ironing my clothes for the for the day trip away or going to the shop like I did and picking up a, a, a brisket of beef ready to, for, th for the smoker on Friday and I said no so we'll put that off I'm seeing you on Friday mate you're coming over so we'll have one week without just because that's an alleviation of stress although it would have been something positive in the sense that I've, I've Im we've implemented that as a friend as friendship thing to make sure that we spend time with each other and we get out of the routine of life and we do something a bit fun but because I knew I was seeing for a party on Friday, I was like, let's postpone that because that just gives me a little bit. It just gives me a couple of hours. And that's the importance of saying no at the right time, because we'd already said yes to something bigger and better. You know, this was like normal sort of coaxing. We do this on a weekly basis. A couple of days later, we were having an event, a proper. And we did have an event. Did we have an event? So I said no. And that gave me gave me time back. And that's what I did throughout the week. And basically, a few other things cropped up, and I said no to them. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, yes, I'll do that, but it's going to be this. You know, and it was the importance of time management and, and the importance of saying no to the right person for the right reasons as well. Don't say no just because you don't, you know, just for the sake of getting out of it. Say no for a reason. And that's the importance of nurturing the right things in life, having the right friends around you having the right events around you, having the right people to share those events with and saying no to the ones that don't matter or the ones that can be put aside. I said, nothing doesn't matter, but there is obviously, we look at life and we try and triage that a little bit, don't we? We try and go, okay, well, that's really important if I do that. I need to get that done. And I suppose this is the importance of something I'm learning like massively through um, my development of understanding now why with my ADHD from a mental perspective, I'm absolutely I'm learning so much because what I do now is I actively plan my next day, which is probably an element of autism as well. You know, you can chuck all sorts in there. But since I've started doing that and planning my day ahead and I actively do that at the end of the day now, I sit there before I go to bed and I'll plan my day ahead. I'm going to do such do 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 and then I'll write it down and I'm, I've got that off my head and I give myself a plan. And that structure is helping me time manage. It's helping me triage the right output for the right people. Like I knew I needed Friday afternoon off because I knew I needed to be ready for my daughter to have the photos done and make the, everything perfect for her. So again, and now normally I would have been engrossed in work or engrossed in something else and not given the right time to her. And that's that work-life balance. That's that, the importance of everything, planning things and time management and giving and saying no to the right people and yes to the right people. Um, you know, and, and also saying no to the wrong people, actually no, uh, acknowledging you're a no, mate. I'm not going to, you know, I'm getting nothing out of that. That's the importance of it is saying no to the right people. And what you get out of it is a bonus. And I got to the I got to the Saturday uh, yesterday afternoon and I was I was led on the sofa. I had a fucking banging hangover. And actually, that was a lie. I didn't have much of a hangover. I was just very tired. Um, we were absolutely all blazing drunk on the on the Friday night. This party was spectacular, um, and you know we had uh, I, I I slow cooked some beef for fucking five hours. I've been watching some American YouTubers on on how to fucking smoke a good bit of meat, and uh, you know I, I I bought a fucking ninja smoker. It's electric, I get that, but it's still, it's not, you know, we're not talking the, the level of an American who's fucking showing me some deep south fucking beef being smoked on smoker. Um, I haven't had that, but but it's the same sort of thing, you know. It's, it's the same, it's lovely. We had a nice selection of fucking beef. We had uh, loads of beers, we had gins, we had, and we were chatting and chewing the fat, mate. We were, we were literally, you know, putting the world to right till three o'clock in the morning. Um, I, I put my mate Kieran to bed about one. He was fucking bungalowed. He'd absolutely gone. I mean, there was nothing left of the guy. He carried him in. We were like, fucking, mate, you've got no legs. <laughs> you fucking, let's get you into bed. Put him to bed. And then me and my brother, we just sat there for two hours, just chatting. Good, good chat, good catch up. Real manly stuff. And that's, and that, and, and I, that's invaluable to me. And that helped me. And the next morning I was reflecting on my week and I was reflecting on when well, I was led on the sofa watching fucking whatever shit was on the TV, um, wrapped up in the fucking quilt and a, and a, and a you know, bottle of Lucozade beside me, wishing on the fucking next hour or so for the headache to go. 
I was reflecting, and this is the importance, again, this is a process I talk about, reflecting on things, because if you don't reflect properly, you never really grasp the, the positives and the negatives. Now, there was no negatives on the Friday, but I was reflecting on all of the pos positives. I, w I mean, the negative would have been I drank too much, but at the same time, I had a good time. It's all worth it, and... Um, I was reflecting all the, all the positives. And I remember li like lying there just going, I feel really, really good. I've got a lot of dopamine going around me at the moment from last night. You know, a lot of, a lot of you know, serotonin, a lot of happiness. You know, we were doing karaoke. You know, we were fucking eating good food, chatting. We played a bit of poker. It was just really good. And, it, and I felt vibrant, if I can say that. Um, and I just felt really good. And that's the importance of spending time with the right people. And then I was reflecting on the whole week and I was going, right, yeah, I said no to that. But well, look what I got on the Friday. You know, I, I said yes to this. I said yes to this. Oh, what did I do there that was different to normal? OK, well, I planned ahead and knew I was actually a forward thinking. Like if I'm going to go up to there and I, I can go past on my dinner break, is there some sort of shop nearby on route that I can dip into? Or, you know, try and give myself that time or even, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of flex, flexibility hours. Managed to sort that out, which managed to alleviate the pressure and everything that went, everything went right, right until Saturday morning. Everything went right because I did things right. And I, it was important. I went from, you know, really fucking horrible shit time at work to going, it is what it is. You know, you, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't change those problems that are coming at me apart from do my job and try and put the fires out, so to speak. And, you know, make it work. So just do what's in the boundaries of my, my knowledge, experience and time. And at the same time, not not being negative towards the good time, the good stuff, the good people. And that's the important part of and and, and since I've surrounded myself. So and, and I, I can't forget the time I had at Henley Regatta. I've never been before. I was so out of my class. Um, you know, everybody there was very, very posh. And I'm not that type of person. I mean, I can I can adjust uh, accordingly. But at the same time, I say that, and it sounds like that's a negative, and it would have been initially a negative for me, going to somewhere where, you know, I had to wear a tie, I had to wear a shirt, and a blazer, you know, it's that sort of kind of thing, you know, you, you had to wear the right stuff. Um, and I remember going in, and I just remember going, fucking hell, you know, and then I started talking to people, and everybody was absolutely down to earth. In fact, they were, they were better, because obviously they don't have the financial burdens that us middle classes have, so, and lower classes, so they, you know, you could, they were the upper echelons, as shall we say, so, you know, and, and, and that rightly so, you know, that's a very, you know, that's the perk, I suppose, but it was a really, really nice event. I felt amazing. I felt incredible the way I was actually dressed. I felt smart as a carrot. I can throw that back from the uh, from from the nineties, um, and I just felt good. I just felt good. It was spending time. It was communicating with people. Yes, there was a bit of anxiety flying around, and I was trying to manage that. I was apprehensive. Did I look right? Did I feel right? Did I feel o I looked at all? I look a bit overweight in this. There was all sorts of anxiety bouncing around. At one time, there was a, a lot of exhaustion. I actually had to said to my friend Adam, I was like, "Mate, can we move across?" He was like, "Yeah, yeah, no worries." And it was just because I was in the like this area, and there was just so much fucking noise going on it was unbelievable um so I, I had to actually ask him can we can we move away and, th and that's the only thing for me is is it gets overwhelming sometimes and that's the and I tried to manage that and we did we we stepped out where we could step out you know we had uh, we were fortunately we were invited to a, an intimate dinner with his friend his colleague and there was 12 of these multi-millionaires believe it or not talking around me and there's little old me going uh, yeah mate I got a couple of quid in the bank mate and you know these guys are literally entrepreneurs big fucking you know we're talking big big multi-millionaires and they were talking about buying a boathouse just to they're literally like I, I'm, I'm thinking of buying a boathouse Jack. and I was like oh yeah okay then buddy he's like yeah just down the road it's a, it's a lovely one but it's for two million you know it's two, two million I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure I want to spend two million on a ranchack and I was like well you know what's it to do it's just to store the boat you know I'm thinking one six one six one point six million will do and then I can I can put a bin in it and you know it'll be okay and I was like well you know, I've got some spare cash, mate. I've got some spare cash. I, I can dip in. I can maybe change 
a fucking door handle or something, you know, and pay for that. That's the fucking type. Of, so, you know, they're the people I was around. Uh, but I had a fantastic fucking... I got, by the way, I got right into that fucking whole scenario there. I was actually picturing myself on the fucking... On the seat talking like that. Uh, uh, but, you know, I was drinking cognac and also his own... He, he came out, he's like, James, I've got this, my own personal cognac. You know, would like to try some. So I tried some. It was like fucking ethanol. I, I literally turned around to him and, was, I, you know, I, I said, mate, um, you know, have you ever thought about fucking going to the moon with this shit? He was like, what do you mean? Just put it in the fucking space rocket. Musk ain't going to have no problems with that fucking cognac. He was like, well, it can't go below 40% because it's not classed as cognac, as whiskey. And I went, well, this is not 40%, mate. This is 99.9% .9 proof. Um, that's what it certainly tasted like whilst it was burning acidic through my fucking tongue. You know, it's almost like there was a layer just gone. It was fucking gone. And then he, he did, but he was that, well, he didn't give a fuck. He's like, just chuck it in the bush if you don't want it yet. I was like, fucking, well, I'm going to drink it. And I did drink it, and I, I didn't see for about an hour. Um, but anyway, digress, digress. So, yeah, I, I've, if, I've had a fabulous time, but that's the importance. And, and I swing back round again, a swinging back round, to say the importance of saying yes to the right things. And saying no to the wrong things. Or even not even saying no, but juggling your life around to make the pressures relieved. And do you know what I learned the most? The most I learned out of this week is how important it is to spend time with the right people. And just spend time in, in, engaging in life. Life is particularly short. We all know this and none of us really. I think when you get, you get smashed in the face, you're born twice, they say, don't they? You say you're born once, you know, when you're actually born. And then you're born again when you realise that you're not invincible. Um, and it's very much true that you get to the point where actually uh, I'm not here forever. Um, and you know that's when you're born again because you go fuck I need to start enjoying life some people don't get that born again unfortunately and they just go through life thinking they're invincible and they're fucking not you know but um, I, I, I got that epiphany about a year ago which is why I'm so hell bent on getting like driving my myself forward as much as I can to get myself financially stable to you know start doing the some of the positive stuff in life but more importantly whilst I'm in this structure the most important part of my life right now is my mental health and my well-being and doing the right things and, and going over the last 200 episodes daily in my head in, in some sort of way you know this is where I go oh, I need to spend the right time of you know the right the right time with these people I like spending time with these people oh they're not spending time with me they're ignoring me now i'll fucking won't give them the time of day and i'll i'll step back a bit because i'll and, I, and i'll put that 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 now time i've i've got back i'll put it back into friendships or relationships or my own time and i can and that's the importance and people don't realize when you you know if you look at your life like a pie chart and i think we can all relate to a pie chart you know, you need to really like if you looked at your life and, and, and all of you just sat there and drew a crude fucking circle and then broke it into four quarters or, or eighths, whatever you want to fucking break it into and, and actually start coloring out the sections that you think you spend with people and what you spend with work and everything else. And so that, that will give you a visual aid. And I've done this, by the way, I've done this and um, it will give you a visual aid on um, exactly. And I've done this on Power BI. I just created a little thing and it showed me a pie graph. And that, that was the eye opener for me because I, that showed me a pie graph of how much time I'm spending at work. And how much time I'm spending with friends, how much time I'm spending with family, and how much time I'm spending with myself. And do you know what I've learned at the moment? Well, my pie chart is pretty fucking good at the moment. I do actively, I mean, yes, work is always going to take a little bit more, and it, and it has to, because you don't get 16 fucking hours working fully do you, you know so th you know you, you need your eight hours of sleep so if you incorporate all your your you know obviously 8 16 is it 8 16 20? I, I don't know my math by the way so 8 16 it was 24 i thought it was 24 you got that's how bad i'm at math so i have to fucking so you you break your if you broke your pie chart into 8 16 24 theoretically what you should be looking at is eight at work eight at home and eight at sleep if you're a working person that's the way that you could probably break it down but when you actually look at your pie chart and you go into that eight where you sleep well do you get that amount of sleep i certainly don't so that's half down to four so that do that goes into a little bit more time with myself although it's not the right amount of time and not quality time because i should be sleeping and resting my body because i'm constantly overthinking so i need that rest uh, and my mind is batshit fucking crazy at the best of times 
And then when you break down, when you, you know, when you do you spend eight hours at work? No, we probably spend a little bit more. Sometimes we commute. Sometimes we're there a little bit later. We're actually spending fucking 10 hours a day. So you've already taken two hours out of your home time. And then when you go in and you take on your shower, your fucking, you know, whatever you got to do ready for bed and your tea time and all that just or dinner time and all that fucking is you. When you actually break it down, I guarantee if you looked at your pie chart and broke it down properly, you would actually look and go, I'm not doing things right. This is why I'm not very well, because I'm not getting the right amount of sleep. OK, so now I need to implement a proper sleep schedule. What do I need to do? If I need to burn myself out before, what I now do is I go for a walk before I go to bed. So I go for a two-mile walk before I go to bed. It burns me out. It gets me thinking. I put some music on. That gives me almost 45 minutes of just meditation. And I don't, and as I've always said to you, I'm not talking about meditation. Om. I'm talking about meditation as the word. Spending time with yourself. You know, doing whatever you need to do to take yourself out of the strains of work. It's like I implemented, uh, I said to um, Nelly, uh, a very good friend of mine, I said, mate, what, you, you know, you showed us you went down to the beach. I was like, fucking, why aren't you doing that every day, buddy? Why are you not going to the beach and jumping in that sea every day to make yourself feel better? He's been doing that and he's, uh, I'd love, I'd love to believe, I hope he is feeling better. He's actually making the effort. And if he makes that effort and, or even just broke it down to three days a week, he's given himself a bit more time. And these are all important. We look at the pie chart and we look at how we manage our life and we look at are we doing the right things. Nine times out of ten we're not. We're not equally sharing ourselves out. And we're certainly not giving us, ourselves, the time of day. I know we're not. I know I don't. However, I'm trying to. And it was like uh, on Friday, I, um, you know, I turned around and um, I was meant to take my daughter to the prom. And I said, you know what? Um, I said, I don't mean to, and this is to my missus, I was like, I don't mean to, to be rude, but... You know, I'm going to do the photography. I've got a little bit of pressure at work. Um, you know, I've got to get the barbecue smoker ready for it's going to take five hours. I want the place looking nice and clean and fresh. And I've got to do a little bit of a shop. Do you mind if I don't drive her two and a half miles up to the prom? Can you do that for me? And it was a bit like there was a bit of resistance. And I just turned around and said, because that would alleviate a lot of pressure for me, knowing I can relax and do that. And I don't have to drive up there into a stressful situation trying to park outside with about a million fucking kids all fucking hyped off on excitement because they're all in dresses and fucking suits and testosterone and hormones are pissing around everywhere. I don't want to be a part of that shit. So I just fucking step back. So and again, that's the importance and, and diving in and saying, I need that help. Can you help me? And that gave me a little bit of time back. That little bit of time helped me relax and get stuck into the party mood a little bit sooner. And even my even my friends, my brother, sorry, my two brothers, my you know, uh, brother and Kieran, they you know, even they said they could see I was stressed, and that was because I had six people in the house. There was so much noise. There was loads going on. The girls were excited. I needed to do photography. I was trying to entertain. I was stressed to fuck, and they were like, "We can see you're stressed, mate." I was like, and eventually I calmed down after about an hour, but. They could physically see that stress level, and, and that wasn't a lot of stress in terms of, you know, that was just a lot going on in my head, a lot of movement, a lot of pressure, a lot of things I had to do. But I managed it, but, it, you know, sometimes you've got to take the right steps to manage that as best as you can. And if you can do that by implementing a certain couple of things or asking for a bit of support, that is what it's all about. Um, so yeah, so and like, that's the importance of learning from all of these. And that's like I said to Nels, to give, you some, like, give yourself that time. Go down to the beach. Give yourself that time. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what's worked this week, actually. And I've learned it. Is I have listened to music. I have stepped back. I have chilled out. I have, you know, done things that have been proactive. But at the same time, you know, not stressing myself out. Just take it's like even, you know, tonight some people may say, you know, you've... I, I, I sort of sent an email about an hour ago. Now, people have said to me, well, what are you doing working? That one hour has saved me three hours tomorrow because I've got loads on. So I'll take that back in flexi because I had an hour spare. It's no different for me putting an hour into there and putting an hour into my podcast. It's the same thing. It's benefiting me as and when I can. And that was the importance. And, that, and when I dive back around, that's why I said no to the podcast last week. It's because I genuinely was like, I'm not feeling it. I didn't really understand or think of a topic to talk about, uh, which is important. And normally if I don't think of a topic to talk about, 
that's a lot of teas there isn't it um if i don't think about that topic then that's where i get a bit lost and i get into the the, the rhythm and then I'm, i lose the rhythm and i'm just like what's fucking going on here mate whereas when i'm in that spirit when i'm ready to go um you know i'm fired up i'm ready to go i'm firing on all cylinders i'm just carrying on it's just feeding off the head i'm i'm enjoying it because i know what i'm talking about i know the structure and that's the importance very 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 important and i know that there's people out there that don't give their self the time i was chatting to my brother actually um and he was saying to me um you know i said hey you've got to give yourself the time mate you've got to make the effort look at how much fucking fun you've had tonight and he'd come round. he was he said to me at the start of the week he wasn't sure if he was going to come along and i was like really like you there mate and then he, sp he spoke to me on the Wednesday. Said, Dude, I'm coming. And he was the first person through the door with beers in hand. He was here, hyped up. And I was like, he could see I was stressed because actually he walked in and said, um, am I here early? Are you okay? I was like, um, no, you're not here early, mate. I'm just proper stressed. <laughs> but, you know, sat down. And again, he, he noticed that, grabbed a beer, sat and chilled. So, you know, and I, and I, got, to, I got to chew the fat with him. I got to ex experience his life. And we don't get that time to talk. And it's so invaluable when you sit down talking to somebody. And that's what I was trying to explain to him. We need to do this more often because it's fun to get this off your chest. To have somebody to open up to. Somebody that wants to listen. Somebody wants to negotiate your problems. There's a couple of problems he was suggesting. I was like, that doesn't sound like a problem, buddy. We can resolve that. And again, problem shared is a problem halved. So important. Come on, I've said it before. That drum's going, baby. That drum is going. So, you know, it's kind of like this, this is how it works. And this is where I feel better because I'm making that effort. Because I'm doing the things for myself as well. And, you know, that's, that's the bit that is key that people don't realise is. When, like I said, when you're born again, you don't realise that you're not invincible. And, you know, I've had a couple of, um, you know, I've had a couple of scares that have made me realise that life is life is precious, you know, through my dad. Um, I found out recently that one of my aunties um, has got cancer down south who lives from the Little John side and one from my mum's side has got cancer as well, both aunties um, and both of them have had cancer before and had it cleared, you know, but it's come back again. So, you know, and then I was chatting to my, my good friend as well and f um, his wife, mum, has found out she's got cancer and and I re reflect from back when my dad got cancer. And when you actually start talking about it, you actually realise that, it, you know, life is fucking short. Really, really is. I know somebody, um, and when I was talking about cancer the other day, um, and I was talking to this person, they knew someone that died at 41 um, through cancer. Just literally just said, no, you, you've got a tumour, that's you. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, fuck. And that's when you realise you're not invincible. You know, you have to do the right things for your mental health. You have to go out. I mean, I, I can't I can't honestly emphasize how much my my mental health has improved. Yes, I get dark days as I did last week. I get dark days, a little bit of pressure. Sometimes I it does get on top of me. I'm a human fucking being. I'm never always going to get it right. I am affected by dopamine. I am affected by doing stupid shit to try and, you know, these are all things I'm trying to actively manage. But I can tell you hand on heart that, you know, where I am now, it far, far supersedes where I was because I'm doing the right things to manage. I'm taking the time out. And as I'm adapting and evolving all the time with my mental health, I'm learning what works for me. And sometimes it is a case of taking a step away from people. Sometimes it is stepping back and going, do you know what? You're not for you. You know you're not giving me the dopamine that I that I need. You're not giving me that that friendship. It's not it's not working both ways. I need to step back a bit to give that time to someone else or to myself or to my family, whatever order, whoever may need it. I look at the pie chart and go, okay, so I've taken an hour out of the pie chart now because that's what I used to do. Um, you know, I'm going to put that hour. Where am I putting that hour? Do you know what? I'm going to give my hour that. I'm going to give myself that hour. Or I'm going to give an hour to my family. Or I'm going to go to bed half an hour early and spend a bit more time with the wife. Whatever it may be. Girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. It's your it's your time that you need to manage. If you just leave that fucking, that, that segment there, constantly being taken up, constantly thinking about it, it's constantly, it's, it's just, a, it's negatively enforcing all the time. Well, he hasn't fucking spoke to me. Well, that's a negative impact and I'm spending and now the next half an hour pissing and moaning about why I haven't heard from that person when in actual fact just fucking cut them out or, or just say take a step back in a nice way I'm not that sounded aggressive but it wasn't just take that step back 
and give that time to somewhere else and nurture something else. Maybe your wife does need it. Maybe your family does need you a bit more. Maybe work suffered a little bit because of family and or friends or whatever. Maybe you need to invest a little bit more time for that next step, that next promotion, that next bit of development, that next training course, whatever it may be. That is the importance of actually actively managing your time and saying yes and no to the right people, right times, right occasions. Something I actually learned from my friend, actually, um, a good friend of mine, the one I went to Henley with, one thing he said to me, and um, it was it, it sounded really fuck. I'm not going to say, I'm going to lie to you. When he said it to me, I was like, all right, I listen to you, buddy, because, you know, I think you're a good guy, but what the fuck are you talking about? And um, And then I've implemented what he told me. So he said to me, whenever you come to a task, and it doesn't mean, you know, with everything you do in life, if you look at that task and go, what am I going to get out of that from one to ten? and triage your time in that one to 10 category. So if I do if I do that, it's gonna to be tough work, but what I'm gonna get out of it is a, is a 10. I'm gonna get fucking kudos at work. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna accelerate myself. Maybe there's a bonus in there, whatever it may be. Or if I put 10 into that relationship, that relationship's gonna be amazing. If I put 10 into the children, whatever. You know, they, some of them are just, you should be doing anyway. But um, if you look at every task you've gotta do and you and you go from one to 10, you will manage your time better because there's things that come to me and I look at it and go and that instantly I go, right, I'm reading that email. I'm going to get fucking zero out of that. That's I'm literally going to end up doing all the work and nothing's going to happen. Fucking stop it. I'm just I'm not even going to entertain it. Boom. Done. Response is nah, not very not interested. Thank you. But when you start looking at these things, you start investing the time in the right places. You start spending quality time. Because now you've got a you've got a pie gra- a pie graph in your mental note, you know, just mentally you look at it. You don't have to write this down. I mean, you can do to visually see it and visualize it to start with. That's I would definitely recommend that. But once you've done that and you look at your time and you look at what you're doing and you go, okay, visually I'm doing this, this, and this. I need, I'm, and then you can mind map that and just go, okay, I'm going to push a bit aside over there. And then if you look at your life tasks and go, what am I going to get out of that? Fucking one to ten. Or something comes, somebody tells you to do something. What am I going to get out of that? Fucking one ten. Okay, I'm going to get fuck all out of that. I'm going to put in half. Or I'll put in five, medium effort, you know, but whatever. Triage those things. If you use those, if you use those two methods, watch yourself change. And it really will. We really will. And, and, and I actively do it. I put in with everybody now as much as I get out. And that's genuine. And if you don't put, if, if I put in constantly and you get out, and one of my friends has just done it to me, I put in 100%, pen, 100% to him. And um, no one I spoke to about before, so don't stress. And um, and, and, he, and I put in 100% and it came, it was 100% coming back and then all of a sudden dropped to zero. Zero percent came back and a load of bullshit. And I was like, nah, okay, I'm fucking done. Uh, well, you know, I'll wait for the next time, but the next time's on him. I've done my effort bit, maximum effort. He now has to put maximum effort in for, for letting me down. That's the importance of it. It's an understanding. And it sounds like it can be quite critical and quite harsh when you talk about it openly. But you're doing this in your head to make yourself feel better, to manage your well-being better. Stop stressing about the things that are out of your control. Stop stressing about the things that are, you know, that, that are not the people that are, or things or instances that are not giving back to you. And do the right things doesn't matter where you are in the world whatever you're doing listening to this if you can follow these steps and, and, and give yourself the time and effort it needs and give your time to the right people for the right quality you'll see the rewards the rewards will come back they don't happen overnight fucking trust me i'm still saying to myself if i keep doing this it's going to come back at some day and i keep doing that i keep doing i keep investing i keep investing i keep investing and and slowly things are coming to fruition as they say um, in the sense that I am getting quality time with friends. I'm getting invited to quality occasions. I'm making quality arrangements to do things. You know, on the back of, yes, on, on the back of Friday's party, the next day I said, right, when's the next one? Second weekend of August, locked in. And I know for a fact that that is our locked in day. We're going to have a poker. We're going to, it's in between two of our, my, mine and my best mate's birthday. So we're going to lock in something special for that. And we're already in the plans for that. And all of these things, they lead into better things because you're spending it with, with the right people. We, even on this Friday night, we were chatting, right, we're going to do this annual thing where we go to a log cabin. Um, and, in, in, and this is, I can't emphasize how important this is, actually, and how much you'll get out of doing this with your close friends, um, especially from a male perspective. Um, 
just having a bit of man time, you know, a bit of um, a bit of bitching and moaning, you know, the, a, a bit of uh, put the worlds to rights. And what we're trying to do as an annual uh, an annual thing is go to a log cabin with a fish in. There's one down the road from us. That's why I said it. Um, and we're going to go and stay in a log cabin. I said to right, we'll invite, you know, whoever wants to come along. Um, we're going to have a log cabin weekend. It's going to be beers, barbecue and fishing. Just putting the fucking worlds to right. Just chilling out. You know, not going anywhere. Not stressing. Turning our fucking pants inside out, you know, so we don't have to fucking wash them. That sort of shit. We're going old school. We're going old school. But brushing your teeth is a requirement, okay? So uh, that's that. we're not we're not that fucking animals. <laughs> anyway, but that's the importance. And these are all nurtured when you, you, you have quality occasions with the right people. And that's what nurtures these follow-ons because they make the effort. They, they chuck the ideas out. You agree, you huddle, you, you get involved. And ultimately, you create memories. Because as I've always said to you again, you can't take anything with you but love and memories. Everything else is just fucking, it's just, it's just materials. Everything I'm sat in right now is a material. When I die, nothing is going. You know, obviously, you know, a couple of heirlooms or a couple of historic things, if you've got them. Not that we get those sort of things nowadays. Um, but it is just all going to get handed back. It's not going to be around forever. Whereas love and memories will always be with me, always, in whatever form I am after death. Um, you know, it's always going to be with me. And their memories are always going to be passed down to generations because that's the importance of communication. Me telling stories to friends, friends telling, telling stories to other friends, friends telling s stories to daughters, children, grandchildren, whatever, and, and vice versa, all the way around. That is a, that's the communication. That's how we learn from each other. We pass those memories down by having those memories with those people. Like I know for a fact that every occasion I've had this week is an absolute splendid fucking memory. You know, I've had some really good times. I've gone from one extreme. I've gone from being a hoity-toity watching Rowan to being an absolute fucking animal drinking gin, fucking beers and, and beef till three in the morning in a fucking, you know, in a in a bloody an hoodie and a pair of pants you know and then you know work on fucking sunday at the golf center you know you can you you keep doing these things and they're all positives with the right people the right things the right occasions the right everything and it's so important and i'm trying to be as positive as i can about this because it is so important to go from those dark places and when you instill all those right things and you say like i said you say yes to the right people you say no to the right people Sometimes you have to say no for your own well-being. And it's and, and, and I've learned I'm learning very, very hard because I'm a bit of a yes man. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am a bit of a yes man. And someone said to me, You can do this. Even if I don't want to, I look and go, I don't really want to upset you. I don't want you to have that sad feeling. I want to make you happy. And that's the downside of, of depression and um and PTSD is I've been to the lowest of lows. So I know what it's like to be sad and I don't want anybody to ever feel that. So now I say yes and I put myself under that pressure to, to succeed, even if it is pressure. And for me, the important bit is now I start saying no. No, I'm not doing it. I get nothing out of that or just stress. Um, and, and I've learned that the hard way. And, I'm, and you know, for me, I'm, gonna, I'm still enjoying making, doing the things I do. But you've got to say no for the right, for the, to the right things at the right time as well. But more importantly, say yes at the right time. There's that film, you've seen it, we've probably seen it with Jim Carrey, uh, Yes Man. And I think it's incredible. When you say yes, you do the craziest things. And I did. I, you know, I, I literally moved work around and, and juggled things around for everybody, said yes to this regard. And I, was, I didn't even know how I was getting there, where we were getting back. But he made all those arrangements. I said yes to the party. I said yes to the fucking, you know, the photography for the prom. So I got to see the smiles on my daughter's face, uh, you know, as she was dressed up in the garden, ready to go for her prom. All really, really positive stuff. All really good dopamine bursting around me. And it's important you do that. Otherwise, you go through life just fucking, just surviving. And life's tough enough as it is, especially at the moment. Cost of living crisis everywhere across the world. We're all fucking worried about fucking war. I mean, and, and, and I haven't watched the news for six months, so I can imagine, and the stuff I know about is just from the odd story here and there. But when you speak to people and you see the worry on their face, I'm like, fuck, if you're watching the news and all that bullshit, 
fucking hell, you know, what, what's going on? You know, what's going on? You're going to be stressed to fuck, aren't you? So it's important. It's important to manage your life, manage everything. Do that little pie graph, honestly. I think you'll get a lot out of it. And also try triaging whatever you're being told or being asked. What am I going to get out of that? Even if that is, you know, going to spend some time with the, with the in-laws and you're like, Do you know what, what am I going to get out of that? No offense, no offense, but I'm not going to get a lot out of that. So I'm not going to go <laughs> or, or we can go, but we're going to be there for two hours max or coming back. Get the things laid out on the fucking line. Get them laid on. In fact, actually, it was fucking hilarious that uh, my mate Kieran, and I can say it's because it wasn't a negative, but he was obviously uh, staying on Friday. And he had a bit of a hangover, so when he could officially drive, uh, he went to pick up his uh, went to pick up his family from his in laws, and he thought he was just going to arrive and literally just they'd be ready, get in the car, go back, so he can go back and sleep. Anyway, they were like he tooted the horn, and they came out, and they were like, "No, no, come in for a minute," and that minute turned into two hours, and he was just sat there going. I don't want to fucking be here right now. <laughs> and he, and he said he was dying inside. And he said, I fucking wish I'd just fucking gone. And I said, I turned around and said, if that had been me, because I'm, I'm really, really up front. And you just say, if I'm not interested, I'll say it's because I'm genuinely not interested. And I don't mean a negative as in I can't help it. I'm just not interested. So I was like, I don't want to go and put myself in a situation where I'm just going to be a miserable fuck. And I, I say, if I'm going to come around and pick you up, it's like, literally be ready. I'm not coming in. Just fucking, I'm going to beat the horn. You come out and I'm fucking, I'm or I'm off. And that's literally how cutthroat I can be. I'm like, no, we're going to go. I don't want to, I don't want to sit wasting my fucking time. Time's precious. I don't want to be wasting it with fucking doing things I don't want to do. And, and people say that could be selfish. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. But I've had a lot of times where I've done things I don't want to fucking do. When you've got children as well, you do a lot of things you don't want to fucking do. Well, now my kids are growing up. It's like, I'm doing shit I want to do. Why do I want to waste my time doing shit I don't want to do? And that's the importance of my well-being. So I can go to every single time and every single reflection, reflection Sunday and I can say, I've had a good week. Because I get enough shit at work. I don't want shit to carry on in my normal fucking relaxing life. If I want to relax, I'll relax. If I want to go somewhere, I'll go somewhere. You know, we tr obviously you've got to give up a bit here and there. Obviously, you have to every now and then. But manage it. Don't make it a regular thing if it's fucking boring you. Look after your own well-being. Make yourself happy. That's the important bit. Make yourself happy. It's your life. You don't know what's around the corner. And that's not in a morbid sense. We genuinely don't. You know, you, you, so you've got to try and get as much enjoyment out of life as you can. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, you know. I've had a bloody good time, actually. Um, and sorry about, like I say, sorry about not, not talking to you um, on that on that Sunday. But again, I said no at the right time for me. I, I wanted to really concentrate. I had a lot going through my head. I really needed to get a schedule in my head for the following week of exactly how I was going to manage it. Right down to... Um, it sounds really weird, but I bought a poker set for a fiver on Face Bay, and I knew I needed to go to the other side of Salisbury to pick it up. So I was like, fuck, that's like 45 minutes out of my life. And I'll give you a quick story, actually, about that. So I, I pitched up to, to there, and it must be something about my fucking face, I think. I pitched up to buy this £5 uh, poker set, and I had what turned into, you know, here's a fiver, I'll grab the set, I'll see you later, turned into an hour and 15-minute conversation. Um, literally, she told me about a divorce, she told me about her ex-husband's five-year affair. Um, we were talking about the house and the renovations she was planning, the locations. I, was, I learned so much about her, so much about this this woman. And um, tra it transpired, I think she was just a bit, you know, she, she'd recently been divorced, you know, and she didn't have a lot, of, a, a lot of time, you know, a lot of people to talk to. So I just sat and listened, but it was a really valuable conversation. But what I will say is I didn't plan for that hour. So... I was like, shit, I've lost another hour. And I did stress out because I, I knew I had to go to the, past the shop to pick up the beef. It was all tied in in my head. I was like, shit, I'm overrun. And uh, fortunately, my, my wife rang me and said, um, hey, James, are you coming back? And I was like, I fucking am. I am coming back. And that was my get out. But it was quite lucky, really. That was my get out. Because I could have sat there talking. I'm just a friendly guy, I think. So, uh, but that's the importance of like managing your stuff. So I, I got to the point, you know, Sunday I planned all this out. I was like, I need to go there, pick up the beef. What's, and I was had to Google how to smoke beef because I'd never done that before. So that was a learning curve for me. As well as, like I say, you all these curveballs that are chucked in life, you need to just have a, a little bit of wiggle room, which is why you time manage appropriately. And if you plan the week ahead to a, to, like, not to a T, because we need, no, nothing should be planned to a T. But if you get the structure in your time, 
and you know what is a definite, what is business as usual, as they say, what your normal routine is, and then everything outside that routine, you triage and look at and go, okay, well, that's going to be there, 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 there. That gives me three hours. What can I do in that three hours for my well-being? I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to fucking, uh, I don't know, drink a pint of water. I'm just whatever, you know. I'm going to spend a bit of time on education. I'm going to spend a bit of time on my hobby, whatever it may be. I'm, you know, so I'm going to sit down with a wife for an hour, husband, whatever. You're going to, I'm going to spend a bit of time with them and that hour because that's my only hour. You know, and, and sometimes that's the reality of life, especially if you've got a lot of pressure on. You've got two or three jobs and you're trying to juggle things, especially single parents. I know it's very difficult to manage your mental health and get that time in. So what is really important is that you look after yourself and and try and grab time back where you are, where you can triage where you're putting your time as well. And if you're putting your time with the wrong person that's making you negative, pull back. Pull back, you know, make give yourself the, the, the you know, the everything you deserve in life. So, yeah, so basically that's it. I mean, I've really thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope you have. And I look forward to talking to you again. I've, I have got so many. I have been recording topics that I've got to talk about. Um, in fact, I'll give you a little sort of snippet sideshow, actually. Um, so, as you know, I run these things. So... I've, some of the topics I've been uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking about in the future, just to give you a little bit of something. So today's topic was the importance of saying yes and no, as as written in the title. I've got am I perfect? True friends matter. Learn to cope. Work through your demons. Depression burgles time. I've done that one. See, look at that. Find me time. Find me time with the me. So I've got so many different topics I want to talk about, and they're all tied in with um, stuff that I can emphasize and talk to you about. So lots, lots, and lots and lots of stuff coming up in the very future. Um, but I'm trying to spread it out. Like I say it's time management. Time management's important to to keep the spirits alive. Keep yourself happy. Anyway, have an amazing week, or whenever you listen to this, enjoy the rest of your try- time. Try and spend. Uh, quality time with quality people and, and spread that positive positivity go into work with a smile look at your next venture how can you how can you develop yourself what can you do to make yourself a bit happier have a think of a hobby jump in do that pie chart though do that pie chart please i think you'll get a lot out of that little cheeky pie chart of where you think you spend the time and only you'll know that and and just break it down and, and just go you know eight 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 and then break down the eights into sections you know so you might only spend eight hours of the morning or whatever first eight hours a day you might spend in you know actually i get up at 10 then i go to fucking work for two hours it depends on what how old you are you know um and what you're doing so but try and triage your time and, and actually go you might look and go fuck i've got a lot of me time why am i not spending time with my friends there i've got shit loads of time i can spend time with them even if you just break it into you know i'm gonna i'm gonna spend an hour from four to five texting my friends having chats Get nurture that friendship with those people. Show them that you, you you're interested and care. So have a good one. Speak to you very soon, you lovely people. And I was uh, yeah. Have a great one. Have a great one. Love you. Bye.